In this video, let's look at how to set up and solve for any kind of mixture problem. I'm going to look at this problem here to start, draw it out so we can understand what's happening, and then I'll show you how you can use a table to solve for any variation of a mixture problem. This says two cubic meters of soil containing 35% sand. So I'm going to draw that first. So here's our two cubic meters. It's got 35% sand. So how much sand is that? That's going to be 0.35 times 2. That's 0.7 cubic meters of sand, which is going to be in here. Was mixed into 6 cubic meters of soil containing 15% sand. So we're adding that with something a little bigger here. This is going to be 6 cubic meters. It's got 15% sand. So that's, let's see, 15%. That would be 0.15 times 6, which equals 0.9 cubic meters of sand. What is the sand content of the mixture? So these are being combined. We're going to add these together. We're going to get one that's even bigger than the both of them. This is going to have 2 plus 6, right? Because I'm adding these together. So the total amount is going to be 8 cubic meters of sand. And we want to know, well, how much sand is in here altogether? And then that will help us solve for what's the sand content. In, in other words, what percent of this is going to be sand. Okay. So we've added the two and three to get the eight. And I know that this has 0.7 cubic meters of sand. This has 0.9. If I combine these, this is going to be 0.7 plus 0.9, which is 1.6 cubic meters of sand in here. So now I can get the percentage that is sand. It's just going to be 1.6 divided by 8. So 1.6 divided by 8, which is 0.2, and that equals 20%. So that's how you can kind of draw this out and make sense of that. Now let's look at how we can use a table to solve this, because sometimes mixture problems ask for different parts to be solved, and by using a table, you can solve for any part of it. So here's how I'm going to draw the table. I'm going to do, I call it a super tic-tac-toe board. I'm going to do one, two, three down and three across. So it's one extra than a tic-tac-toe board like that. And I'm going to label this percent W for whole amount and then P for part. I'm going to say this is A. So let's just pretend this is our, our A amount. This will be our B amount. and This will be the mixture. So A, B, and M. So A, B, M right here. Now, whenever I use a table like this, I try and figure out what am I trying to solve for here? And it's saying, what is the sand content of the mixture? So what percent of this is sand? I'm going to put my X in the percent for the mixture. So right there is going to be X. Okay. Now, the way that this table works is if you take a percent and multiply it by the whole amount, you get the part. So the percent times the whole equals the part. That's what I did down here. 35%, that's 0.35, times the whole amount, which was 2. So 0.35 times 2 equals 0.7. That's how I get the part that is sand here. So I'm always multiplying across to get the part here. So it's going to be that times that equals that. This times this equals that. And this times this part will equal that. Also, I added the whole amount together to get the mixture. So I said the 2 plus the 6, that's how I got 8 cubic meters. That will mean that I'm going to add the whole amount here. So I'm going to have the whole amount plus the whole amount equals the mixture whole amount. So I'm adding going down here. I'm going to do the same thing with the parts because, remember, I added the 0.7 plus 0.9. That gave me how much of the amount of sand was in here. So I'm going to add going down here as well. So that's how you can set up this table. Again, I'm always going to put in my X for what I'm trying to find first. And let's see how we can fill out the rest of this table. So we know that it's 2 cubic meters. That's the whole amount for A. So I'm going to put 2 here. And it was 35% sand. So it's going to be 0.35. When I multiply these across, I get 0.7, which is what I did down here. Okay, for this row, I'm going to have 6 cubic meters and 15% sand. So the whole amount is 6. It's going to be 0.15 here. 
0.15 times 6 is 0.9. And then I'm going to add 2 and 6 to get 8. Lastly, let's add 0.7 and 0.9 to get 1.6. So now we have an equation here, x times 8 equals 1.6, and we can use that to solve for x. So in other words, 8x equals 1.6. We can divide both sides by 8. This cancels out. x equals 1.6 divided by 8. And we had actually done that over here. 1.6 divided by 8 equals 0.2, and that's going to be 20%. So that's the answer to this question. So let's try one more problem that's going to be a little bit trickier than this one, but we can use the same table to set up and solve for it. If this content is helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe. Next, let's look at problem number six. It says, how many milligrams of metal containing 45% nickel must be combined with six milligrams of pure nickel to form an alloy containing 78% nickel? Let's set up the table first. So we've got three lines down, one, two, three, three lines across. And then we're going to put in percent whole part, A, B, and M for the mixture. So what we want to do first is figure out what are we actually trying to solve for. And it's asking how many milligrams of metal containing 45% nickel. So that's what's the total here for this amount. And it has 45% nickel, so it's going to be 0.45. And remember how the table works is we're always multiplying across. So I'll just put this here times equals, times equals, and times equals. And we're going to add the whole amounts going down and add the parts going down. Okay, so 0.45 times x, that's 0.45x, simple enough. Next, let's see what else we have. So how much of that must be combined with 6 milligrams of pure nickel? So there's 6 milligrams, that's the whole amount. Pure nickel means it's 100%, so 100% as a decimal is going to be 1. 1 times 6 is going to be 6, so I'll put that there. And then it's going to form an alloy containing 78% nickel. So the mixture is going to be 0.78. That's a 78%. Well, how much is going to be in the mixture? It's going to be X plus 6. So I'll put X plus 6 here. Then we can add 0.45X plus 6. That's going to go right here. So 0.45X plus 6. We filled out the table. And our equation is going to be down here. So this part makes our equation that will help us solve for x. Let's transfer that over here. We've got 0.78 times x plus 6. It's important to put that in parentheses because the 0.78 is being multiplied by x plus 6. And that equals 0.45x plus 6. So now, let's see, we're going to solve by distributing first here. We get 0.78x plus 0.78 times 6 is going to be, if you use a calculator, you can get 4.68, and that equals 0.45x plus 6. Let's subtract 0.45x on both sides, minus 0.45x, and let's so that's going to bring all the x's to the left. Let's also subtract the 4.68 on both sides. So the x's will cancel out here. The numbers will cancel out here. This is going to end up as 0.33x equals 6. Uh, we were, sorry, this was subtracting 4.68. We get equals 1.32. Lastly, we just divide by 0.33. Divide by 0.33, these are going to cancel out, and we get x equals 1.32 over 0.33 is 4. So the answer to the question, how many milligrams of metal containing 45%, well, we're going to need 4 milligrams. That's going to be the answer to this question. Sometimes you might get a little bit of a trickier variation to mixture problems, like this problem here. I'm just going to quickly read this. I've already partly set up the table. 
So a metallurgist needs to make 12.4 pounds of an alloy containing 50% gold. So the mixture is going to be 12.4 pounds with 50%. So I filled that out here. One of the metals is 60%, the other is 40%. So here's my 60%, here's my 40%. The question is, how much of each should he use? I need to figure out how much should go here and how much should go here. What you don't want to do is use X and Y. There's an easier way to solve this using just one variable. So here's what you can do instead. Let's say that we're just going to make this one X. How can we write this amount in terms of X as well? If I make a tape diagram over here, let's say that the, the mixture amount is going to be 12.4. So that's going to be made up of X and this amount. How can I write this in terms of X? Well, if I take the total and subtract X, that's going to be this part. So this is going to be 12.4 minus X. And that's what I can write over here. So the B whole amount is going to be 12.4 minus x. So that's what you can do in situations where you need to find both of the amounts of the parts that you have that you're mixing together. After you solve for x, whatever x is, you're just going to do 12.4 minus x to solve for this amount. Lastly, sometimes you might get a mixture problem that involves rates instead. So this one has dollars per pound and the number of pounds. And so the one change that you can make is instead of having the percent here and the whole here, you'll have the rate here and the amount of that thing here. For this problem, one of the parts here is going to be, uh, this is, let's see, cinnamon, which costs $19 per pound. And so I'm going to put 19 here. That's the dollars per pound. And there's four pounds of that. So I'll put four here. If I multiply dollars per pound times pounds, notice that there's pounds in the bottom and in the top, these will cancel out and the unit here will be dollars. So if there's $19 for each pound and there's four pounds, 19 times four is gonna be 76. So there'd be $76 worth of the cinnamon that goes here. So that's the, the last variation for mixture problems. This video should be able to help you solve any kind of mixture problem that gets thrown at you. I hope it's been helpful and I'll leave a link for the worksheet in the description and it also has answers at the bottom so you can check to see if you're getting the problems right.